So from the beginning, I have a, a clear uh, GIMP software with no plugins installed. I'm going to teach you guys how to install my plugin into GIMP. So <clears throat> uh, first thing you do after you install the GIMP software here is you will go to the edit menu and preferences and we're going to navigate to GIMP's plugin folder and we're going to go to the folders and expand it and select the plugins. Now on PC we use this directory, on Mac we use this directory. On Mac you have to, after you do this, you have to two finger click um, this directory here and start a new uh, terminal folder I believe and then you have to give the plugin permissions <clears throat> for it to show up in GIMP. So, but on a PC, you select the top directory and in this little file cabinet here, and it's gonna highlight GIMP's plugins folder for you. So go ahead and open up that. And this is where you're simply going to paste the PY file. It's gonna end in PY that you download from my website. It'll be downloaded in a zip file that you're first gonna have to download that zip file and then you're going to right click on the zip file and extract it to a folder on your computer. Then inside that folder, you're gonna find the plugins. <clears throat> now, I already have them um, copied in my clipboard so I'm just gonna go ahead and paste them Actually, I don't. Let me go get what I need. I need this, 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 and this. So, here's our scripts going in right now. Okay, we have the V4 plugin. This is what it's going to look like inside of your. Um, zip file that you're going to extract and once you open the folder you'll you'll see this so you're going to drag copy and paste that into this folder that we just navigated to now we simply close everything down and we restart gimp and now the plugins installed you'll see it right here on the bottom show up there it is and here they are up top here. Now, to process a photo, you simply open the photo, run the plugin, and I'm going to process this for wood like I did yesterday. This is the photo I worked on yesterday. And then I think it's 300 millimeters for 12 inches, so that's okay. Let it process, and then after this, uh, we will export it, and I will bring it over to the Laser Software's RD Works in Lightburn, and to show you guys what to do in those softwares. Okay, now that it's done, don't get caught up with how it looks on screen. Uh, the goal here, this is made for a laser, so we're going to export as 12 by 12. And then we'll do a 680 DPI wood. Now, the first time you run GIMP um, and you export a photo, this quality here is going to be down at 90. Okay, just slide that up to 100, then press save defaults right here, and it's going to remember that every time. So then you press export here to get to this screen. And then you simply just press export again and you're all done in GIMP. Uh, next, we'll come over into Lightburn here. Let me delete what I have going on here. Bring in what we just did. Now, there's different zoom levels that you can zoom to. That's going to hang on, my computer's lagging. 
Now, when you zoom in, there's going to be one point where it's going to look just like a photo. I think that's right here. See, right here's detail level. And here's photo. Now, this is this is how it's it's going to look if you were to, you know, burn it on something accurately. So if we zoom in very close, it gets down into the detail that the laser is actually making. So whether you're you're uh, burning too much away in the blacks or you're not getting getting this fine detail in the brightest whites, you got to find that balance with your settings and make it happen. And then you will get this result here. Now, the most important thing to do now, um, I never have to edit a photo further than running it through the plugin. Now, if I get sent a crappy Facebook photo or something that's super grainy or looks terrible, you want to start with the best foot forward. So I run it through uh, Topaz Labs Gigapixel um, if it's super terrible. But but that's that's all I'll do. Just trust the process. It's, it's going to work on everything. Um, the most important thing here is pass-through mode right here. This is going to tell the laser software, do not touch my photo. So it's going to keep it exactly the way it is here, how it came out of GIMP. If you turn this off, these options here will become available and it will apply it over the top of what GIMP has done and it will destroy your photo. Now, uh, after that, you press OK and you send it off to your laser. Now, if you're in RD Works, we'll take this here. Let me delete this one. And same thing here the, with the zoom levels. So right, right here is how it looks, you know, when all the detail that makes it comes together like, like this here. It's also the same as if you were in person, if, uh, you know, the further you get away from it and as you come in, get closer to it, you start to see this detail and you can get this detail much smaller and closer together as you, you're able to increase your DPI and successfully burn it accurately. And then you'll start needing to get a magnifying glass to come in to see it this close in detail. Now, the most important thing in this software here is this output direct. As you can see here, there's nothing available. And then we un unactivate it. And now it wants to apply effects over the top of the photo, just like Lightburn does. And these are just named differently from between Lightburn and RD Works. Um, output direct. So this will tell it, do not touch my photo. Now, the difference with uh, RD Works and Lightburn is Lightburn will update your line interval for you, and our DPI was 680 DPI. So if we take 680 and we we divide, if we divide 25.5 divided by 680, you'd get this value here. Now, um, <clears throat> That's what you're going to do if, if you if you don't have this DPI box where you can simply go change it to 300 where it will put it at like 0 0.085, 0 0.084, then that's how you would get this value here is divide 25.5 or 6 or 0.7 by your DPI and, you, and you'll get the value. But that's important to, to do because otherwise your Y axis isn't going to take a step forward the right amount of space to make this DPI. <clears throat> so output direct and match your DPI to what you set in GIMP. Press OK. Send it to your laser and now you guys are well on your way. The, the rest is machine calibration in your settings.